Okay, if you draw a crease from the ASIS to the groin crease here, usually the SCIA travels within this vicinity. Okay? Uh, if you draw a line from here to the pubic tubercle, here is usually where the inferior epigastric artery is. Okay? In the medial here, near the pubic mouth, this is where the pudendal system is. So you have three systems within the groin. You cannot miss a perforator uh, in the groin region. Okay? But nevertheless, today uh, we'll concentrate on elevating the skip flap. So once you draw a crease here, there's two perforators coming out for the skip. One is in the medial, which is always a direct cutaneous. And one is coming out near the ASIS, which is the lateral perforator, which travels underneath the D fascia, penetrates the D fascia somewhere around here, and then goes in an axial pattern. Axial pattern underneath the skin, all the way to the flank. So when you hear about somebody doing the skip flap, let's say by 8 by 20, which is larger than the ALT, it's usually based on the lateral perforator. Another advantage of the lateral perforator is that it sh gives branch to the iliac spine. So you can also take it as a combined flap with the bone together. Okay? But since uh, we're going to be focusing on the basics, we'll elevate the skip flap based on the medial perforator, which is a direct cutaneous perforator. Okay? The, la the landmark is if you the lateral margin of the pubic tubercle, 4 centimeters, here, this is where you should find the medial perforator, usually, okay? So let's say we're going to design the flap, okay? And then we're going to start the elevation. What's the, what is the, um, the disadvantage of the, uh, of the skip flap is the same reason why the groin flap lost its popularity as one of the, even though it was one of the earliest free flaps, because the pedicle is relatively short. So if you're going to you be doing the skip flap, you want to start where the, the recipient vessels are relatively near. So on the dorsum of the hand, on the dorsum of the foot, on the lower one third of the leg, on, on the forearm. This is where the recipient vessels are really, really close at. Okay, So you want to start doing it there. The best advantage of the skip flap is that it is a relatively very thin flap. Okay. And another thing that why the skip flap is now being utilized a lot is because you can harvest it with the lymph node. So you can do a lymph node transfer with this tissue in the axilla or in the leg where the patient has lymphedema. Okay, the lymph nodes are usually located in the deep fat, right above the deep fascia. So if you want to include the lymph node, then we have to elevate it right above the deep fascia. So we're going to make a hybrid today. We're going to harvest with the lymph node. Uh, start with the inferior margin. Thank you. Can I have that towel? The towel. Thanks. What about the donor site? What, what donor site? That's the biggest advantage oh, yeah, you can get a primary pair. Okay, so yeah, so that's a good comment. Thank you. So the donor site, usually the textbook says if you have more than 8 centimeters, you cannot close it primarily. That's not true. Usually what you need to do is you need to do a pinch test. And then if you're able to pinch it, that's how much width you can take. If you want to take a larger width, what do you do? You flex the hip. And then you close it with the hip flexed. And then gradually, you allow the patient to extend the hip. Okay, you might have a little bit bad scar, but nevertheless, you will have primary repair. The biggest width that I took was 14. 14. So in a big, pa in a big patient, of course, <laughs> not a small patient. So, so depending on how much you could pinch, and depending on flexing the hip, you're able to take a large width, okay? So the approach, we like, I like to do the inferior margin first. Okay, we talked about the importance of traction and counter-traction, okay? And if you do the inferior margin, what's really great is that this is where the distinction between the deep fat and the superficial fat is very, very distinctive, okay? So here you can see the fat lobules are thin, small, small, and then suddenly you see this opening. That's where the big fat lobules are. So that's the location of the superficial fascia, okay? Usually the lymph nodes are located near the femoral uh, artery. So the medial you go, the better chance of you having a lymph node, okay? All right, so once we see this layer right here, what I want to do 
By the way, this is all on YouTube, guys. Follow my page on YouTube. <laughs> Push like. I'm not getting any money yet because I don't have 4,000 followers, but anyway. All right, but anyway, uh, so here you can see this white film-like layer. That's the superficial fascia, okay? So we're going up the superficial fascia. Now, what's also important during the dissection, you see traction and counter-traction? Okay, this white film layer is more evident, okay? And what you want to do uh, during the elevation is if there is a superficial vein, you want to include it because the, the accompanying vein to the perforator usually uh, drains to the superficial vein. So here we have a perforator already, you see that? Very nice perforator. This is not even dyed, but uh, yeah, you can see that. Nice perforator here. And we're elevating. So, so, we wanna, so what we want to do is we want to identify the potential perforators first by doing the inferior approach. I think this is the superficial vein right here like this. Not really sure, but maybe or maybe not. And once we've identified that, then we're going to go ahead. So we have one nice perforator here for sure. And once we identify this, we're going to go ahead and start elevating the superficial, uh, the superior border. Okay. All right. So now we've identified this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to finish the excision. on the superior border. Again, the depth goes all the way to the superficial fascia. Okay. And now from the lateral to the medial, we're going to be on the same plane. Thank you, sir. Elevating Here's also a nice superficial vein. You guys see that? Here, that's a superficial vein. So we want to include that in the flap. Now, if you, for some reason, I mean, if you if you feel that uh, you know you're uncomfortable elevating in the in this layer, you could just go to the D fascia. This is the D fascia right there. Okay, just make it much easier for you. And when you come to the perforator, you dive deep. Okay, so we have one perforator here for sure. All right, we have one superficial vein here. Okay, so we're gonna elevate the rest of the flap real quick. So we've identified one perforator and one superficial vein. Okay, so here's a superficial vein again for those who didn't see here. Okay, you see that right here? Okay, and then we're staying on this plane Thank you, sir. Elevating, elevating. Where's the superficial inferior in the gastric? Somewhere here. Probably, we'll uh, probably uh, cut. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh, this is a axial branch perforator. Okay. So we're almost done already. So we're coming near the perforator. So in this vicinity here, we have, so we identified what you have. So here we have a nice perforator here. So this extends to beneath the D fascia to the SCIA. Okay, so this is the part where it gets a little bit tedious. You see that? That's the SCIA underneath the D fascia. Here's the accompanying vein. So you see the artery and vein right here, okay? Okay, now within this vicinity, we also look for lymph nodes. Here's also a nice perforator right here, look at that. You see that? Very nice, very big. <coughs> look at that, woof, this is big. That's so maybe... More, that's more in your... Um, pudendal so system, huh? Yeah. So look at the size of this, right? So, so in the inferior resection, you, s you identify two nice perforators, and obviously this is going to give you a less pedicle length, but a much larger diameter to play with. And this is obviously going to give you more pedicle length, and then you have to dissect underneath the D fascia first. So this is why cutting the inferior margin 
looking at the options and then deciding is a good idea. Okay. All right. So as we cut through this layer, I think this is a lymph node. Again, near the me near the the medial. Here, that's a lymph node. You see that, right here. This is a lymphatic vessel going into the lymph node, right here. You see that? No. And a lymph <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said when I went to Dr. Koshima. JP, this is lymphatic vessel. I said, what? This? Fiber? <laughs> so we got a lymph node, lymphatic vessel. So we're going to harvest with the lymph node here. And then if you decide to take this, we're going to we're gonna go underneath the defascia, trace along this SCIA right there, the artery and the vein. Trace, trace, trace until you see the source vessel. Okay, we're going to detach the distal end here. Okay. And the rest is now all now all basic dissection. So and the lymph node needs to be attached to the flap. Okay? So taking a look at where so here we're going to go a little bit more deeper, trace the CIA. So we're almost near the source vessel here. So look at look at the diameter. You see how large it's getting? So it, when you do it on here, it becomes a much more uh, uh, a better a diameter to work with. Okay? This is also can be used very nicely as a local flap uh, when you want to reconstruct the genital area as a propeller flap for scrotal coverage or part of the penile shaft uh, or the genital area. So this is also a very nice flap to work with. Okay, So if you want to base it on this, again, free freestyle concept, you just dig in and you can see that it's leading toward right there. You see that? Look how big that pedicle is. Yep. So Dr. Halleck is pulling on the pedicle. She wa he wants to detach it right there. So that's also a huge pedicle. These two are probably meeting at the SCIA, so if you want to work up, you know, take both, then we could just trace it all the way and then connect it based on this single bufferator, okay? Okay, so since we identify that, quickly come here, do the rest of the elevation based on that single bufferator. And as we dissect, we're pr probably going to come through a superficial vein because it was included. If not, okay, maybe I don't see it. Here, here's the vein right there. You see the superficial vein? That's part of the flap. Superficial vein, perforator, and another perforator here, and SCIA probably meeting with this branch. This is the lymph node included in the flap. Okay?